Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I wanted to do a quick video going over the release of Cura 410 and talk about some of the new functionality and what all it includes. Uh, I'll kind of jump through um, the interface, show you a couple things that are new, and talk about what was added. Overall, this release appeared to be mostly focused on bugs, um, but there were a couple new features added. Uh, some people will use some more than others. Uh, the two most notable ones are the CAD imports using a plugin and the uh, flow rate visualizer. Uh, so you can see that in the preview. So if you're the type of person who adjusts the flow of your print for uh, different parts of the print itself, whether it be your infill shell or uh, whatever the case may be, you can now see that in the preview mode, which can help you get better prints. Before we jump over to the computer, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about this video or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right, guys, I got Cura 410 up here and I have the latest release notes. Kind of wanted to talk to them really quick and then kind of show you uh, the main features that were added that you'll really see. A lot of these were bug fixes. As you can see here, they spent a decent bit of time on bug fixes. And being in the software industry, I know that while it might not always be uh, the most appealing thing for the end users, uh, the bug fixes are still very important. Uh, so I'm glad to see that they are spending the time to fix issues when they are brought up. All right, so the first one I wanted to talk about, which isn't something I'm going to use most of the time, but you're able to import CAD objects uh, with a plugin versus having to convert them over to STL files. Um, again, this isn't something that most of us will really need, uh, but if you're used to working with CAD, it does make it a little bit easier. The next one here is going to be the flow visualizer. Uh, basically, I'll show you this one a little bit here in a second, but you can see where it's going to increase or decrease the flow now in preview mode. And if you're using the filament change script, you can now control where you want the nozzle to go. Um, it's pretty handy if you're swapping out between filaments. I did a video covering how to actually swap between filaments mid-print and have it stop at a specific layer. So I'll link to that below, but this just gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're using that. And then the rest of these are really just more uh, functionality that you won't really notice on a day-to-day, -day, uh, but they do help a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the preview of a couple of these things. So I've got Baby Yoda here. Uh, I use this model a lot just because it has a lot of different details. Uh, so it does make some of the examples a little bit better. I'm gonna slice it really quick. Uh, before we jump over to preview, I wanted to show you a couple changes I made here just for a test. I adjusted the flow rates for different things, dropped the wall flow down to 95, um, bottom is at 90 and top, and the standard inflow or infill is at 100, and then the skirt and brim I have set to 150. Um, basically just giving us a couple of variables so we can see differences where it's not the same speed all the way around. But if we go over to preview and switch our color scheme to flow, um, and then we can go ahead and just drag down to different layers. You can see that the inside is going to be printing a lot faster than the outside here. And then if we go down to the bottom, uh, you can see where we have the bottom layer being printed even slower. And then same with the top. Um, I did notice that if you're trying to look at this uh, and figure out what makes the most sense, if you take off the walls, it's a lot easier. So if I went to wall thickness here and change this to zero and then slice it again, it just gives us a lot more visibility into the inside. Obviously, it won't show you what the shell is going to be um, on the flow side, uh, but you can see a lot of the inside a lot better. So as you can see here, the different spots are going to be printing at different speeds. I also know that in most cases, you're not going to be changing uh, the f actual flow f uh, throughout the print like that that much. Uh, most of the time, I have it set to about uh, 95 or 94 or 95%, and depending upon the printer. I created a video on how to calculate the flow rate. I'll link to that as well. But the more, more important ones here are going to be your walls. Uh, so you want to make sure that those are accurate when you're doing the prints. 
So you can change those individually or change the speed of the entire thing. Um, I am working on getting updated profiles. There's a couple things that I wanted to test still. Uh, I'll get those published on the site by uh, probably the end of the week, maybe sooner. Uh, but if you're looking for the updated profiles, I'll have my normal ones out there. Um, there's not too much that have changed. Cura has gotten better with the default profiles, but I do change some of the settings to prevent uh, the slicer from making some uh, potential assumptions that I don't want. And I also just recently published an article kind of going over Cura versus Simplify 3D and kind of my thoughts on that. I've used both of them quite a bit. Um, my default is Cura, especially at this point, because they're able to keep up with uh, development a bit more, and obviously it's free. Uh, but if you're interested in that, I'll link to that as well. It's just a quick overview of uh, kind of what both slicers are, pros and cons of each, and which one I recommend for the average hobbyist. Spoiler alert, it's Cura but I cover the whys in that article. All right, so if you have any questions or would like to see any other videos, go and leave a comment below or join us on Discord, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. All right, guys, so that covers the updates for Cura 410. Like I said, it appears to be mostly focused on bug fixes, which is great. Um, sometimes you just got to have a release that fixes a lot of the issues that they had before. There were a couple features that I thought were worth talking about in a little bit more detail, so I covered that in the interface when I was going over the release notes and went into the preview showing you the flow control or flow preview. Um, but that's really it for Cura 410. Uh, we'll see what 411 has when it comes out, and I will get that video out hopefully before it's actually released next time instead of like a week late. Uh, but there was a couple things that I wanted to test. And I will be getting the Cura profiles out by end of week. Uh, so if you're using my profiles and would like to switch over to the newest one, uh, I'll have that published by the end of the week. If you guys have any questions about this video or would like me to do any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.